first of all, how how was it that Tanat arrived to Uruguay and has become the emblematic variety? Uh, it was um, introduced in 1870. The, the, the origin that was uh, practically really proved was that came from Argentina, from Concordia, from in, in front of Salto City. Mm -hmm. There is a, an Argentinian area that was planted in 19, 1970s by Basques uh, immigrants. And a French Basque in the Uruguayan side, uh, Arriague, uh, received some cats uh -huh. and started to plant in Salto, the Tanat. And in, 18, in, in 1870s, uh, they plant about 200, 200 plant about 200 hectares of Tanat in Salto, mm -hmm. and they start to beneficate it in, in a winery uh, that was built by, a, by British people from the butchery in industry, no? Mm -hmm. uh, they start to, to, to experiment with vineyards and they, they contract Arriaga to a French guy that know about grape and wine. And so they start to plant, uh, to test the varieties and the Tanat grape <clears throat> was so successful during those years that many great growers from other areas uh, start to plant also tanat. The, the characteristic, so it's a, it's a Basque, mm -hmm. southwest France influence uh, over the, in the Pyrenees area. And it was uh, <clears throat> so successful at that time as a good producer of quantity. And, and it's very uh, adapted to humid and cooler climate. No? Very different than than the more dry areas of Chile and Argentina. So uh, in Uruguay, they also planted at that time uh, in, in the south region, some Cabernet, some Malbec, some other varieties, uh, an Italian influence later. After the Basque and the Catalans uh, appear the Italians of the north mm -hmm. that introduced Nebbiolo, Trebbiano, and, and some other uh, varieties from the north of Italy. Uh, but the most successful from all those grapes was Tanat because it was uh, always getting a good color, good uh, maturity of alcohol. At that time, you must think that what a wine winery or winemaker was looking was for good, uh, strong alcohol to protect the wine from contaminations and from all those things, and good color. Uh, and also, um, uh, some people say that the, 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 the stronger the wine, the buyer, the, the commercial buyers uh, buy it more because they, they can do with a lighter wine something more bigger mm -hmm. with a blending. No? So that may be happening at that time. If you get grapes not well mature, you can put some little of tanat in the blend and you improve the wine. That was the case of some uh, varieties like Fall Noir mm -hmm. and Pinot Noir, the two varieties that were planted at that time in, in Uruguay. So they used to blend it with tanat to, to give more stronger color and stronger uh, alcohol. Yeah. So that's the origin uh, and it, it is today the most adapted and successful grape still because you, you, we now have many varieties planted. We have experiment with Spanish, Italian and French origin varieties. And always Tanat, you get the same, the, mo the most consistent quality every year. No? So the grape grower that live uh, selling grapes have quantity. They want to, to have a production that is not very, very weak. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, the, the winemakers uh, found in that variety a great potential. No? If you put uh, control the quantity, you get very mature tannins and very mature color and, and, and flavors. No? And that is the attractive thing. And it, it could be rainy, it could be very dry, but our conditions here, the, the grape is the best adapted. 
And in terms of uh, thinking of the kind of clonal selection and, and how the grape has evolved during its time here, what would you say are the main characteristics of Uruguayan Tanat? You've been studying a lot. Mm. The, the, the Tanat is considered one uh, not great differences between clones. There, there, there are nine clones in, in France. Uh, classified in, in Montpellier, in the INRA of Montpellier, and the difference between them are little differences. So it's that's what it's called uh, in plant genetics as a um, very uh, homozygous, homozyg that means not great diversity between the variety. And that means that the origin of Tanat must be European from a very uh, restricted area. And the restricted area was the Pyrenees area. So that's interesting because uh, you know that many studies come, says that the Vitis vinifera come from the uh, region of the Mesopotamia, mm -hmm. no? Yes. Where, where, you have, where you have today Iraq and uh, Iran, Iran. Mm -hmm. and uh, Georgia and Armenia, no? that area uh, between the lakes, the Black Lake and the... So the, those um, those areas are the origin of Vitis vinifera. Uh, it was uh, uh, suggested that the Phoenicians introduced in Europe Vitis vinifera. But today we, th we are practically sure that some European origin, original Vitis vinifera were uh, in some areas. For example, we can't say that about Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, Syrah. You, probably those grapes were coming from um, from Asia because they have a lot of diversity between clones and they are uh, some grapes now I understand that are very heterogeneous. Mm -hmm. heterogeneous no? So uh, Tanat is one of the ones that is not and it's very restricted area and probably was never crossed with other varieties, just with some uh, Petit Mansen, Mansen Noir, Gros Mansen that come from that, that, the same Pyrenees area. So it's interesting that we don't have a big uh, diversity between clones, but we have get some that has more loose bunches mm -hmm. and that is interesting for us and smaller leaves, you know, then that has huge leaves, double or three times a leaf of Cabernet Sauvignon. Mm -hmm. So if you have two big leaves, you have a lot of shade over the, the, the canopy and that's not good. So we prefer smaller leaves and we have made a selection of, of Uruguayan clones. Today, be between all the clones of Tanat, maybe we have 25 clones of Uruguay and nine clones in France. So those are the diversity materials that we can access to style. No? Mm -hmm. So um, that was uh, the, the origin, the diversity origin of the variety. And today we have, uh, uh, we know that information because we have uh, sequenced all the genome and we are studying the, the comparison with, of, of Tanat with Pinot Noir. And there are not many other varieties sequenced, so we are just knowing that uh, Tanat is much more uh, uniform, the genome, than Pinot Noir. And that gives a clear idea that it's an uh, European origin variety. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting just to know it. And it, there is a relative relation with uh, Manseng Noir and Petit Manseng. Mm -hmm. That's why we have planted Petit Manseng in Uruguay also, looking for understanding the development, and we found that Petit Manseng does excellent. So that's after 20 years, vineyards of Petit Manseng. No? Mm -hmm. There were some reports, old reports, that says that Petit Manseng was already planted in Uruguay in 1870s, 1890s, but we never found a plant after uh, 1930s, when our family arrived to Uruguay, we never found Petit Manseng ever. Mm -hmm. So it might be planted, but nobody keep it planted after that time. 
but Tanat continued because it was very successful. I think because it, there were more attractive red wines at that time than white wines. Probably it was abandoned, the white. And now we have planted 20 years ago, 25 years ago, Petit Manseng. And it's, a, it's one of the whites that we are believing that it would be very successful to, to for the companion of Tanat. No? Uh, as a as a blending partner or as the no as a as a variety okay. huh? as a as a white wine to to we will say today the, the flagship wine of Uruguay is Tanat mm -hmm. and you but the, the white <laughs> could be Petit Manseng uh, probably would be uh, the, like the partner no? in the Super. in quality and in terms of so if the genetic material doesn't vary too much. Um, and you said that the climate in, in Uruguay is quite consistent mm -hmm. um, throughout the, the country, but there's a lot of difference in the wine regions and the, and the soils. soils. Mm. So what are the main differences in soils that we'll find and how does that impact the, the characteristics of Tanat in particular? You, you saw that um, the, the, I show you some soils there, one of the north that is very sandy red soil very more poor, more low um, organic matter. And the one in the south is more heavy clay, calcareous. No? We have experience with those two soils because we have vineyards there since 40 years now. Uh, and the comparison between the tanats in those type of soils is very, is very different because you get a more, we said more softer, tannins and elegant tannins and more flavor in the sandy poor soils and the dark uh, more heavy clay calcareous you get more rustic tannat more stronger more uh, more heavy the wine less freshness in the flavors and, and the tannins are still more rustic no? So the, the, the two the difference today we will find in, in interesting difference for, for us in, in, in diversity of wines of Tanat, you will find it because of the soils. So if you if you, if you taste today of uh, we're going to taste now of these two soils, but if there are other couple of uh, use I told you that there is more than ninety different soils. Ninety mm -hmm. different so it's a very uh, mosaic uh, distribution of soils and if you taste the wines of different soils of Tanat you will find interesting differences uh, there are other that are more stony soils interesting and other soils that are more uh, um, how you say lime lime soils mm -hmm. no so the Tanat would uh, behavior different in those kind of soils and you will get more uh, interesting diversity because of the soil. We got, we get, um, we have a wine that we blend the south with the north because the, the, it's more freshness, fruity and, and delicate tannins in the north with the rustic of the south and we get a very complex wine that we can taste it today. First taste separately the two different wines and then you can taste the blend. No? But I think uh, it's true that we don't have big differences in the climate is uh, cooler and humid compared to Argentina, Chile areas uh, or California. Mm -hmm. And we have um, the main differences are in the soils. You know? And some altitude that we have planted, but the difference are about 1000 feet you know, between a vineyard and another. Mm -hmm. So that's a, in general what is happening in, in, in the experiments uh, that are today we have plantations of Tanat practically in all the country. Some are very small yet, but we are still learning a lot of the soils, no? about different soils. And do you think there are any soils or climatic conditions which are not appropriate for Tanat? Uh, usually we found that uh, what is not very appropriate is when low, when, when it's a dry area. So the soils we don't found, uh, um, I would say, a, a limit 
in quality. I think that the, the Tanat suffers a very dry season, for example. When we have a very dry summer, uh, sometimes in Uruguay it's unpredictable. We can have a very humid summer or a very dry summer, but usually it's more humid. If you plant it, uh, we have tasted Tanat in some areas like Barrosa Valley in, in Australia, California, in some areas in in Salta, in, Argentina, in the north of Argentina, and you will find there more, uh, you, fl you smell more the alcohol separated than the fru from the fruit. And I, we believe, we never prove it scientifically, but we believe it's because of the dry weather, the dry conditions. The, the flavors of tanat usually are much more integrated with the because it's a variety that needs to, to mature a lot, but you will smell it and you will never feel alcohol in our conditions. No? But we have filled uh, other tanats in those regions that you feel too too hot the wine, too alcoholic, and you are losing the freshness of the fruit. No? So, and we have suffered that in some special summers, no? that we have suffered a very dry season and you get a wine that is not so uh, integrated, well, I would say, no? between flavor and alcohol and body. No? Yeah. So okay. it's, a, it's a really a variety that is very comfortable in, 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 in an environment that is humid, okay. like also happening in the Pyrenees. They used to, to blend it a lot with Cabernet Sauvignon, no? but there are some tanats 100% now in the Pyrenees because they are improving more the maturity, and, but they work very different than us. They make a maceration, very long maceration, and so they get very rustic tannins. Mm -hmm. Because extended macerations for tanat, we think we don't need it. Uh, it's not like Cabernet or Marlot in Bordeaux that you can leave it 30 days in a, in a skin. Uh, tanat needs 10 days maximum and separately and, and you will get a more elegance in the, in the tannins extraction. And what else have you discovered in making tanat over the years? The winemaking methods, what would you, you know, through your studies, what have you found to be the best methods we, that you should use for, for tanat? We, believe, we think is uh, working uh, uh, some like uh, happen with some it's a very paradoxic, you know, because Pinot Noir is very delicate. Mm -hmm. But we like open tanks, punching mm -hmm. down, uh, 50%, 30% whole berries, press all together to the barrel, uh, not more than 10 days of maceration, finish the fermentation in the barrel. So the alcoholic fermentation would be finishing in the barrel with some yeast that would die inside the wine. And that will never, we try not to touch that wine in the barrel after 12 months, 18 months. So we make a least contact there. It's like we do, everybody do in Burgundy with Chardonnay, for example. The, you know the batonnage, all that stuff, all that stuff. It's something like that, made for red, no? Uh, without any racking like a Bordeaux style. The Bordeaux style would say rack the wine every three months. We will not rack any uh, of that wine until 18 months maximum, approximately. And you will get a more fatness of the wine in conjunction with the tannin. And that gives a body and round mm -hmm. wine, rounder wines. We just move the wine if we have a reduction. That's why vinificated in open tanks avoid any reduction in the, in the, in the barrel. So, and we use mainly 50% new barrels in Tanat. We prefer the new barrel for Tanat than for a Cabernet Sauvignon, than for a Merlot. We usually use the first new barrels for Tanat and then second wine, third wine, we use it for Cabernet or other varieties. And why do you think Tanat as a variety lends itself to barrel aging? Or why do you think it's important to barrel age a, a Tanat? It's, it needs because it's so rich in tannin that you need to open the wine. 
Uh, there, there have been trying uh, other strategies like micro oxygenation in the in the tank mm -hmm. to make an acceleration or a more rapid maturity of the of the tines. We don't like too much. Um, it's very difficult to control micro oxygenation and not affecting flavors. So we prefer the barrel. The barrel is much more uh, respect from the flavors. If you add oxygen directly, like micro oxygenation, maybe you soft the tannins, but you are losing other things that you don't know exactly what they are. So we prefer to open tanks maceration, it's more aerobic, then press all together to the barrel. And, and if it is a very uh, rustic wine, we separate the second wine of the press. If it is not so, the seeds are nice and plush, pleasant, we press all together to the barrel and leave all over the leaves for 12 months or 15 months or 18 months. So it's like a leaf contact in red. No? It's a surly, like mm -hmm. the French said, in red. Right. Uh, like we used to do in Chardonnay or in some whites. No? And do you, are there any wines or varieties that blend very well with Tanat? Tanat usually was a very successful blending mm. wine because it, it's uh, when we don't get so uh, um, controlled quantities in the vineyard and we don't get very mature fruit, the tannins were very rustic and it was very nice for mm. blending, for example, like a Merlot or a Cabernet Sauvignon or Cabernet Franc. The there classic are, Bordeaux varieties. The classic Bordeaux varieties with 20-30% of Tanat are mm. fantastic. They ha I am sure they have planted in California, in Barossa Valley, in Australia, in some areas like in Chile also, they have planted Tanat and they don't put it in the label, but if you, if you put 20% of in a Cabernet Sauvignon, you will get the the structure in the palate mm -hmm. that sometimes is missing in the Cabernet Sauvignon, or a Syrah, mm -hmm. or a Merlot, that are much more or less concentration of tannins. Or Cabernet Franc Tanat is a beautiful blend also. Mm -hmm. the, the Cabernet Franc has a lot of flowers, flavors, very nice nose, mm -hmm. and sometimes is it's not very strong in the, in the structure, so it gives that structure is given the tanat. In South Africa, they have plant uh, also tanat and it's for blending. No? Mm -hmm. Usually, everybody is using it for blended, uh, but you can, in, in many regions, you can put 15 or 20 percent and you don't need to explain it. I know uh, perfectly that in, the, in, the, in some areas of California that we think are very dry for Tanat, like the Central Valley, they are producing Cabernet Sauvignon with a lot of Tanat inside. Because they have planted those big wineries, they have planted Tanat to give structure to these varieties, like in very dry areas Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot lose a lot of tannin.